بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعده أبدا سيستاذ الله سبحانه وتعالى said in the Quran لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء فإن الله به عليم الله سبحانه وتعالى said you cannot reach the level of piety the level of al-bir until you spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mimma tuhibbun what you love and Allah is aware of what you spend in his path inna Allah bihi alim Allah is aware of this now I remind myself and you this does not relate to zakat this does not relate to normal charity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying a very, is putting a condition. Allah is saying, not just spending. Allah is saying, spending that which you love. Giving up that which you love. Not giving up anything. What is spare? What is excess? What I am throwing away instead of putting in the trash can, I give it to somebody. No. What you love. The finest example of that is the thing, the, the event that inshallah tomorrow we will commemorate in the name of Eidul Adha. This is the tafsir of You cannot reach that level of Albir until you spend in the path of Allah that which you love the most. <coughs> Ibrahim alayhi salam was put to this test when he had the dream where he saw himself slaughtering and sacrificing his son in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sacrificed a hundred camels then he saw the dream again so he sacrificed another hundred camels he saw the dream again so he sacrificed another hundred camels. So he saw the dream again. So he realized. This is a different thing. This is not about sacrificing camels. Is it easy? Just think about it. We make this, I mean, I am saying this so easily. Hundred camels. What is the meaning of hundred camels? Uh, go and go go and Google, see what the price of a camel is and one hundred camels is how much money. That's today. Mimma to hipbun, what you love the most. When this ayat was revealed, Abu Talha al Ansari anhu, <coughs> he was one of the wealthiest of the Sahaba of Rasulullah, Madani Sahaba, and he had among his properties he had his best property was a date orchard which was fully mature, fully bearing, highly profitable. It had a wall around it and it had a well of sweet water. This place was so shady and so full of shade and so beautiful that Rasulullah Rasulullah used to sometimes go and sit there on the wall of this well. And it was so nice. You know, he would drink the water, he would sit on it. There is a, I'll come back to the story, but there's a beautiful, uh, on a side note, there's a beautiful story of one day Rasulullah was missing. So the Sahaba got worried. They said, Where is the Rasul? So they went and searched for him here and there, and there they couldn't find him. Abu Huraira thought that this garden is where he normally goes. So when he went there, he couldn't find the entrance to the garden. So he found a, a drain, fresh water drain. It was not a dirty water drain. It was a, you know, like a stream. So he crawled through this drain inside. And he saw Rasulullah sitting on this uh, wall of this well. 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he came. He said, "Ya Rasulullah, we were worried. We don't know where you went and so on. So we, I'm humble. I found you." Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Go and tell the people, Allah will forgive everybody who is a Muslim. Allah will forgive everyone who said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah." So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, "Ya Rasulullah, I will say this. Alhamdulillah, but who will believe me? Give me some, you know, some some sign because nobody will be. They won't believe me if I tell if I tell them this." So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Take my shoes." So he he had sandals. So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu took the sandals of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and carried them on his head, and he went into the market and he started calling out. He was not into the he was on the way to the market, but he was calling out and saying. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has said that he will forgive everyone who said la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah For his fate he met Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radhiyallahu anhu So Sayyidina Umar stopped he said what, what are you saying He said this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told me So Sayyidina Umar he, he didn't he beat him but he kind of thumped him on his chest and Abu Hurairah was, was a was a was a slim man you know man as and uh, Umar ibn Khattab radhiyallahu anhu was a wrestler So he he hit him on the chest and Abu Hurairah fell down, and he started crying. Poor man. So Sayyidina Umar said, "No, take me to to Rasulullah Sallam. Where is he?" So he caught him. He took him. So Abu Hurairah the Rano went, and he was crying. He said, "Ya Rasulullah, this is what Umar did to me. He hit me." Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't say anything. He said, "Ya Umar, why did you hit him?" He said, "Ya Rasulullah, if people know this, they will stop working." Alhamdulillah, this is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But if people know this, they go announce this. Nobody will do anything. As I say, La ilaha illallah, khalas, enough for me for Jannah. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled and kept quiet. Now, the reason I'm telling the whole story is because when this ayat was revealed, Lantan al Birra hatta tunfiq bima tohibon, Abu Talha al Ansari came to Rasulullah Sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, this garden of mine. Which is the most valuable property in Madina? I would like to give in the path of Allah, charity. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Why?" He said, "Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has said, 'Lan Tala Al Birra Hatta Tun Fiqum Ma Tuhibu.'" Huh? Now imagine, this was the Abu Talha had many other properties. He could have given anything, but he said this one. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his hikmah. He said, "Don't give it in charity to the general public." He said, "Distribute it among your family." Huh? That is the hikmat of the Rasul Ali Salam. The point I'm making to you and my myself, my brothers and sisters, is today we have we live in a world today where we have converted and made convenience into our ilah. May Allah forgive us. We worship convenience. Right, everything must be. I don't. I should not need to move. Everything, <clears throat> I should. I don't need a book. Hey Siri, where is the masjid? Inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun. Everything convenient, right? Nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that you should deliberately put yourself into trouble, but it creates a certain kind of mindset. Where we want convenience in everything, including in din. So the moment there is any bit of hardship, no, 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 I want convenience. And the classic one is this whole issue of moon fighting. Why can't we have a calendar? Why can't we have astronomical calculations? We simply say twenty fifth of December is Christmas. Khalas. We will say twenty fourth of whatever month is will be Eid al-Adha. It doesn't matter. We 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 do this. You do that. See, yeah, Habibi. The Nabi Ali Salam he said, "See the moon." So no, 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 no. The moon was born. He didn't say. He did not talk about the moon being born. He said, "See the moon, brother." You know, I saw the moon today. It is definitely two days old. Of course, it is two days old. Of course, it is two days old. Who told you it is one day old? It was born yesterday. You could not have seen it because of the angle of the Earth. Unfortunately, you don't know astronomy. You don't know geography. You cannot even understand if I explain it to you. But you will argue. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Why convenience? 
it would be so nice. If we could have Eid on, the, on a weekend, it would be beautiful. Then why not do Juma also on, the, on Sunday? Hmm? Why, why, why do Juma on Friday? I don't know how many of you know, there used to be a time in America where Juma was done on a Sunday. They used to do the Juma Salah on a Sunday. There was a time, Alhamdulillah, we are over that. But convenience makes sense, no, do Juma on a, on, on a, on a Friday. Why Friday? We do Juma on a Sunday, Alhamdulillah. The meaning of love is to suffer pain. You have to be willing to suffer some pain. The nafs has to be controlled. We cannot have everything according to our hawa. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Furqan, Ara'ayta mani takhada ilahahu hawa. Ma ma'ana ilahahu hawa. Yani nahanu kulluna na'abud al-hawa. We do what the hawa tells us to do. What our desire wants, we do. No, we have to get out of this. Please understand this. Convenience in its own place, no problem. Alhamdulillah, get and buy a nice car, have a nice house, have this. Today we, we want no inconvenience. We live in, in, in temperature controlled environments. What kind of houses did we, did we live in our countries? In the summer you felt the heat, in the winter you felt the cold. Here, everything. Button, 70 degrees. Whatever, outside, snow, hail, no problem, 70 degrees. Okay, alhamdulillah, do it. I don't have an objection to that. But don't bring that into the deen. Do not bring that into the deen. This deen is a deen of hope of Allah and hope of the Nabi alayhi salam. And the word of Rasul alayhi salatu was salam, there is no value for that. That is the most valuable thing in the whole world. And if someone tells you to sacrifice this, this word of the Nabi alayhi salam for convenience, Leave that person. That person is not your friend. That person is not your friend. Don't go near that person. Take some pain for this deen. Because this world will end. And we will go in our grave. And we don't want pain there. There we want raha. There we want sukun. Then you have to take some pain here. Then you will get the sukun there, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu to accept the fasting of these days. We ask Allah to accept our, our uh, udhiyya tomorrow insha'Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts together, to keep us from fighting, to keep us from ikhtilaf, to keep us from abusing each other. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us akhlaq and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallam and to gather us with him. وصلى الله على نبي الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا رحمه الرحيم